Ah, oh, hell. I'm in the wrong game again. Hey guys and gals, Nary here from Drake Wing Gaming. Some of you are on Twitter, the Game Dragon. Today I'm coming back at you with a Let's Play episode of Undefeated. So, let's go ahead and jump right back in, everybody. Go ahead and sit, please sit back and enjoy for the next 18 minutes while entertaining you. Let's jump right in. Alarm chain, you are up, and let's go. Alright, I can't really pinpoint why that is. Maybe I'm just anxious, or maybe I'm traumatized. Probably. Hey, Xander! So much for the silence. Redline pulls up next to me, clapping his hand against my back. Kinda stings. Good morning, man! Uh, morning. He's walking backwards now, facing me as we talk. You were really quiet this morning. I, I'm usually a light sleeper, but I didn't even notice you were gone. Thanks. I've had a lot of practice sneaking around. How'd your thing with Drayden go? Are you cleared to fight? Redline narrow, narrowly avoids bumping into a rhino who was intensely focused on his phone. Yep, and you should probably take care of where you're going. The hyena laughs. I've got eyes in the back of my head, Xander. I'm fine. See? Watch this. Oh, Whoa! Redline moves directly into a rather burly kangaroo man, who stands unmoved while Redline stumbles forward. I didn't bother telling him Bucky had been standing in our path for the last 20 seconds or so, next to the open door of a gym room. Bucky smiles. You all right there, Red? <laughs> Need to watch where you're going, little man. Redline hammers a fist playfully on Bucky's chest. Sorry, Buck. <clears throat> Sorry, Buck. <laughs> there you go. The kangaroo's paw moved to ruffle Redline's hair, gently shoving him toward the open door to his left. Go get started on the jump ropes then, Red. They both laugh, and Redline follows the momentum into the gym. Bucky turns back to me. And Xander, good to see you this morning. I nod. I take it, I take it you got the go-ahead from Drayden. Yep, he told me to be careful, though. Makes sense. Don't want to go breaking anything else. We'll take it easy today. Get in here and start warming up. I follow suit, moving through the door into the space. One half the room is wide open, an empty space where people are standing around, stretching or talking. There's only a few people in here. That makes sense, considering a lot of folks are probably off having breakfast. Along the back paddled wall are a few bags of various shapes and sizes. Heavy bag, heavy bag, speed bags, all suspended off the ground by chains. At the end of the room is a large mat with a circle on it, clean and empty, waiting for fighters to use it. it seems smaller than the one used in official fights, but big enough to spar in. Of course, Redline is here too, twirling the jump rope up and down around his body like he promised Bucky. A few people had gathered around him, chatting while they stretched. It seems so easy for people like him to just talk with others. I don't understand how he's so quick to make friends, especially with the speed he's jumping rope. Most people would be too focused on their breathing, but he's pacing himself well, from what it looks like. I start my stretching as well, keeping to the corner to focus on myself. That right shoulder really needs this. I can feel my muscles releasing that tension it had been building up since the incident. Alright boys, let's get it going! Bucky claps his hands a few times and jogs into the space. Everyone stops talking and turns their attention to him. Redline is still jumping rope in place. Bucky slides up next to me, actually, patting me semi-aggressively on the back. You'll see, what, you'll see we got a new guy joining us. This is Xanda, everyone. Wanna introduce yourself? The eyes turn to me now. Uh... They're all staring. Hopeful. Excited. If not excited, they're at least expecting something. Redline looks excited, but that seems to be his default state. He's really whipping that rope around fast. Right. Introductions. Uh, hi, I'm Xander. I've been fighting for a while now. Uh, what more am I supposed to say? I got my arm, that I got my arm broken by the biggest guy in the league. I'd rather not be that. I'd rather not. I'd rather that not be not what I'm known for. What I'm known for here. And they probably already know all about that, so I can't really give them any new information. I guess Bucky can tell I'm floundering as he slaps my back once again with an awkward chuckle. Let's give Xander a warm welcome today, right? He's gonna be training with us from now on. I expect everyone to give him the same amount of respect I give you guys, alright? A number of guys nodded at me, saying a few welcoming words. I see a few in the back whisper to each other, but I can't tell what they're saying. Bucky's hand sits on my shoulder, patting it gently. He'll be working with me today. The rest of you start getting warmed up for the for light sparring. Redline started to open his mouth. Red, you keep on that jump rope. Xander, come this way. Bucky moves towards the heavy bags lined against the wall, carrying a pair of training gloves in one hand. I follow suit. The rest of the guys have already got their hands ra their hand wraps on, spreading out across the gym to warm up as they chat amongst themselves. They're mostly around my size, but a few of them are a little bigger. I guess Bucky doesn't mind having some different weight classes here. A sharp whistle pierces my ears, calling my attention back to Bucky and the heavy bag he was stationed next to. He pats the bag. He pats the bag and tosses me the gloves. You doing all right? You've had a, you've had group classes, sure. I'm sure. I nod, undoing the Velcro on the gloves. 
Yeah, for a while. They're cheap. Bucky chuckles at that. Smart. Coaches can be hit or miss, but you're here, so I assume they so I assume they did you well. It doesn't look like you brought hand wraps, but that's fine. I don't want you sparring just yet. I don't think my I don't think to I didn't think to bring my hand wraps or gloves down to the gym with me. It makes sense to bring them, I just forgot. Hand wraps are used to protect my knuckles, but I normally don't need that kind of protection when I'm training. I don't know what to expect down here just yet, though, so maybe I should be bringing them just in case. If you didn't bring any fang, that's fine. I'm sure Red or someone has some they can spare. Redline calls out from somewhere behind me now, still jumping rope. I've got a bunch you can borrow! Focus on your breathing, Red! Double time! The whipping of the rope against the floor speeds up. Bucky looks back down at me. But like I was saying, those gloves will do you just fine. Bag gloves. Thinner and lighter than normal sparring gloves, so I can practice striking faster. We're still getting your arm back up to speed, so I'll hold the bag for you. I just want a few one-two combos, alright? Take it slow. I nod and close my eyes. Slowly I breathe in. Slow breath in. Slow breath out. My feet shift out. My left, sli my left sliding forward a step with the heel angled out. My right slides back a bit, angling its toes out. I bend my knees ever so slightly. Coming down as my weight presses down on my back foot. My hip twists to the right, and my shoulders follow through, firing, left arm firing my left arm within out into the bag. It connects with a hiss, spraying through my gritted teeth. I force my hips back to the left as my right arm pistons forward. Another hiss, another hiss forces its way out, of the, uh, as, out, out as the punch lands, and I've noticed my expression has changed, scrunching up my face as I force my aggression onto the bag. Bucky's been bracing himself against the bag, clutching it tight, but even he takes a step back as my punches land. Whoa, easy now, Xander. You said take it slow. I snap my glare into his eyes. I'm not sure why. I don't want to intimidate him. He doesn't flinch, though. He just stares down with that same lax demeanor he's been carrying this whole time. Sorry. That was good, though. You caught me off guard. But remember, we're warming up. I know you want to fight, but you can't go messing up your arm again. All right, take it easy this time. I nod and focus on the bag. It's clearly weathered after taking so many punches over the years. Even then, it'll probably last longer down here than I will. That's a depressing thought, but it kind of pisses me off. I'm so fucking frustrated. I need to take it out on this or something. Bucky's hands, Bucky's hands twitch, and I see him still watching me patiently. Deep breath, Sander. Take it easy. Force all that anger down for now. My hips turn slowly, and my punch reaches out to the bag. The leathers collide and part gently. Good. I twist the opposite direction, my right reaching out in a similar fashion. There you go. All I want to do is focus on your form for right now. Nice and slow. My punches, if I can call them that, continue in a similar fashion. Slow, gentle taps against the bag as my feet stay planted. This goes on for a while. The rest of the class continues their sparring. The temperature in the room seems to rise. Almost as if they, almost as if they can... Almost, uh, I almost ask if they can crack a window open, but that's not exactly an option down here. We continue for a while, and after Redline finishes his jump roping, he joins us on the next bag over. Bucky moves away from me to inspect the other students, correcting their form and physique as they train. They're all moving so fast, swapping partners every so often, laughing as they test each other's techniques. Doing all right, Xander? Red calls over from the other bag, leaning up against it. He's worked, he's worked up quite the sweat, but that's to be expected after what he's done so far today. Yep, I just... I throw another combo, slow like before, but with a little extra power behind it. That. I can't help but speak flatly with him, at least for now. Everyone else clearly has shown their, pro their prowess in the class. Feels like I'm taking remedial boxing for beginners, as if I haven't been doing this for over a decade now. I look like a fucking idiot. You're doing great! I look back up at Redline. It's probably hard without your full range of motion right now, but it's looking really solid. Keep up the good work! He claps me on the shoulders when he walks past, throwing a few people behind me. Thanks! I don't know if he heard that or not. <laughs> I guess it doesn't matter either way. Class continues like this for a while. The rest of the class moves on to heavier cla heavier exercises while I change up the combos on my bag. Redline gets himself into more trouble, but watching him stay quiet and work twice as hard as the rest of us is therapeutic somehow. After a while, Bucky calls for the end of the class. All right, boys, good work today. Redline is still off to the side, going some pun doing some punishment crunches. But as you all know, we got a rite of passage for, for when someone new joins our squad. The rest of the men turn to look at me. I think I can tell where this is going, and I move back a bit toward the center of the room. Bucky nods at me and smiles. Everyone get a free body shot at the newbie! Roll my eyes and lift my arms. I did the same thing at my old gym. 
A number of guys line up in front of me. They're all wearing training gloves, but I really don't mind either way. After a bit of talking, the first one steps up. He reels back, and I tense my abs. The blow makes contact, slamming against my body as I hiss out. It didn't really hurt as much as I thought it would, though. Though there are a lot of more, a lot more to go. He moves on, and the next one steps up, taking a second to aim his shot. Another thump, another hiss, and he moves on. Conditioning is important, especially when it comes to taking punches. This almost makes for a good ab exercise, so I can't really complain. The line shortens, with each punch forcing a well-timed hiss out of my mouth. It's good to spit some air out when I get hit, at least when I can predict it, as it makes the bottom of my body tense up. That can make it easier to take a hit. I thought it was uh, better to take a hit with your body relaxed. Yeah, isn't it, don't when you tense up, it makes it easier to damage muscles when you get hit? Hmm. A few more pass through, and the punches finally start to sting. My abs would be, ni would be a nice shade of red if anyone could see under my shirt. Only one left to go. Redline moseys up to me. He's absolutely drenched in sweat, and his mouth is slightly open with his tongue hanging out. You all right, Xander? Um, <clears throat> you all right, Xander? Even his voice sounds exhausted. I suppose that's a given, seeing how hard Bucky's worked him today. He still sounds excited, though, but that'll probably never really go away. Mmm. My arms are still up above my head. My body tends to anticipation for the strike. A bit of sweat drips off my elbows onto the floor. Redline wastes no time shifting into his stance, and in the blink of an eye, his fist finds its mark in the center of my body. Skah! With a heavy thump, I stagger back, legs quiver before I drop to one knee. The pain resonates up my body, stinging and burning at the center even after his glove departs. Oxygen strains itself through my gritted teeth as I try to, dra as I try to drag it back into my control. Redline dropped down as soon as I had, tossing his glove aside to put his hand on my shoulder. Shit, are you okay? My eyes meet his, along with a few of the other guys who had already had their shot. A few are laughing, either among themselves or at me. I can feel my face go hot. First, Bruce embarrasses me in front of everyone twice, and now Redline dropped me, drop me in my first class. This is so fucking humiliating. Get off! I shoved my hand. I shoved my hand. I shoved his hand away from my shoulder, forcing myself upright and backwards. The room goes quiet. All eyes are on me and Redline for a moment. I'm already sweating from the training, but the pressure's got me sweating cold now. Bucky claps a hand, his hands together, forcing attention back to him. All right, great stuff today, guys. Go hit the showers. It seems to have fixed it. The men go back to chatting amongst themselves, strapping their gloves and moving toward the door. Make sure you get time on the treadmill sometime before tomorrow. He tries to yell over the sound of them talking, but no one seems to respond to it. I march toward the door, the sting from the blow still burning in my stomach. Sander, wait! I try to ignore his call, but Bucky sticks an arm out as I pass by him. Hold up, bud. Need my gloves back. I huff a bit of air out. My eyes refuse to connect with his as I tear the gloves off and present them. You right there, Xander? His arm still extended moves to prevent me from my attempt to slide past him. I'm fine. You're not, but you don't have to talk about it now if you don't want to. Go cool down. We can talk some other time. I can't help but exhale a sigh before nodding. Fine. Bucky's arm raises like a barrier gate, and I hurry out of the gym. Since the day I got here, it's been, humi it's been humility and pity day after day, but I'm getting fucking sick of it. Bruce has already made me look stupid twice. And now I had the chance to meet new people, but Redline had to go and fuck that up, too. I don't know what else I'm supposed to do. My path back to the stairwell is cut off by a crowd of people headed to the cafeteria. I really can't be bothered to fight my way through that. My only other option is to turn around and use the stairwell at the end of the hall. That one at least gives me easy access to my room. I thought I could handle that stupid punching tradition well enough. I did it. I did it my last gym. I'm not sure why these guys are any different. Well, these are professional fighters. It makes sense that they'll be stronger than the guys I'm used to. And why the hell did Breadline have so much power? I didn't think I was too try too tired to take to take that, but it still stings. I can't seem to get a win anywhere. It's like this place is out to get me. And now I look like an idiot for leaving the gym in such a such a rush. I can feel I can still feel sweat dripping off my chin. Have I been leaving a trail of down the hallway this whole time? Probably not uncommon down here, but still gross. Passing by the gym, I can't see Redline. That's for the best. I don't want to see him right now. The rest of the hallway is pretty quiet on the same st on the way to the stairwell. Everyone's off to lunch. So I've got some time to get a change of clothes and a shower. The closing of the heavy metal door's latch echoes through the space. It's cold. And quiet. The chatter from down the hall is completely silenced behind this door. That silence is quickly broken, though. A breathy sigh comes from somewhere above me. My ears flick to aim towards it. Whoever gave that sigh starts moving on down, starts moving on the staircase. I wait a moment to see if I can determine if they're coming toward me. It's quiet enough to hear a pin drop, at least enough to hear the sound of my sweat dripping onto the cement floor. It draws my attention for a second. 
gross. I guess they're going further away. How far up does this go? I move up the stairwell, keeping my ears out for anyone back there. Looking up, I can't see the end of the staircase. Not that it's very well lit here regardless. I get to the second floor of the stairwell and open up the door. Finally, away from the rest of the people, I take some time to get a fresh change of clothes from my room and head to the showers. Halfway down the second hallway, there's a massive communal shower room opposite the bath opposite from the bathrooms. There's four rows of showers, each row barriered on either side with a brick wall. Neither one neither one wall is a bunch of hook near one wall is a bunch of hooks and benches for people to keep their clothes on while they wash while they wash up. This place is normally packed, even with a second shower room down on the opposite end of the wall. It's not too bad now that there's no one around, though. These guys can be really annoying, even when people are just trying to wash up. I just have to come back more often when it's less crowded. I toss my clothes on the bench and carry my all-in-one body wash into the nearest stall. A crank of the faucet knob and a gush of cold water fires from the shower head. I manage to avoid the initial spray, though I can, though I can feel its chill from stray droplets against my fur. I turn the hot water knob as high as it will go, but the temperature doesn't increase much, even after a few minutes. I guess the hot water's all used up. I, I sigh and step into the frigid spray, immediately tensing up as the water strikes my spine. My breathing stutters and my muscles convulse for a second as they're exposed. After a few seconds, my body loosens up. I can breathe slowly and smoothly now. The body wash lathers up nicely. It smells kind of minty, too. The bottle calls it charcoal chill. Charcoal chill. I guess that explains the black coloring. I'm sure what it has to do with the mint. Someone enters the shower room. Xander? Christ, I really don't want to talk right now. I sigh. What? Redline moves in front of my shower stall. Are you okay? I can't help but look at him. He has no problem staring at my naked body. Alright, I'm going to go ahead and uh, pause it right here. Thank you all so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring that notification bell. Y'all have a wonderful, happy Sunday, and I'll see you on Monday. Bye-bye!